All right, welcome to the second part of section 2-4 of Linear Models. I'm Mr. Polarski, and we're going to get this party started. We have example 2 here, and we're talking about a spring that has a length of 8 centimeters when a 20 gram mass is hanging at the bottom end. An additional gram stretches the spring, another 15 hundredths of a centimeter. Write an equation for the length y of the spring as a function of the mass x of the attached weight. Graph the equation and interpret the y-intercept. To approach this problem, we really need to understand the meaning of this right here. The first sentence, the spring has a length of 8 centimeters when a 20 gram mass is hanging at the bottom end. That will give us an ordered pair and we're going to determine our ordered pair by this sentence here or what variable will be the independent and which variable is going to be the dependent variable. Write an equation for the length y. Length right here is being defined as the dependent variable because it's being given as y and y is typically our dependent variable as a function of the mass x. So when we go to write our ordered pair, we'll be putting the mass first and then the length of the spring, which will give us our ordered pair x comma y. So from the information at the beginning of the problem, we know it has a length of 8 and there's a 20 gram mass on the spring. So that'll give us our ordered pair 20 comma 8. key fact to understand is this 0.15 centimeters. An additional one gram stretches the string 0.15 or 15 hundredths of a centimeter. That's a rate 0.15 centimeters per gram. 0.15 centimeters additional stretch to one gram. That's our rate. And remember, the slope of an equation is a rate, the change in y over the change in x. And in this case, the y is our length, the x is our mass. So the change in length, 15 hundredths of a centimeter over 1 gram, that's our slope. 0.15 over 1, which does simplify to 0.15. Now we have enough information to use the point-slope form of an equation. The point-slope form, which is given by y minus y sub 1, which is the coordinate of the point, times the slope, or the slope times the quantity x minus x sub 1. So all we have to do is take this information this ordered pair 20 comma 8 and this slope 0.15 and plug it into the point slope formula. y minus 8 is equal to 0.15 times the quantity x minus 20. To make this more of an equation we understand we're going to put into the slope intercept form which is y is equal to mx plus b. To do that, we first have to distribute the 0.15. That'll give us y minus 8 is equal to 0.15x minus 3. 0.15 times x is 0.15x, and 0.15 times minus 20 is minus 3. Then we add 8 to both sides, which gives us the equation y is equal to 0.15x, or 15 hundredths, x plus 5. From here, it's going to be uh, very simple. We already have one point, comma, 20, comma, 8, to find another point, which the point we're going to find is the y-intercept. We're going to find the y-intercept, or the point where it crosses the y-axis. One reason to do that is because the problem asks us to interpret the y-intercept and to graph a line. It's uh, much easier if you have two points. It's a pretty easy thing. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0 and we substitute 0 into x and solve for y, which will be a very easy thing to do. y is equal to 0.15 times 0 plus 5. 
0.15 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5, so y is equal to 5. So that gives us the ordered pair when x is 0, y is 5. Now if we interpret that quickly, when there is no weight on the spring, the spring is 5 centimeters long. So the spring is five centimeters long with no weight. So we've accomplished two of our goals. We wrote an equation and we interpreted the y-intercept. So now what we have to do is graph the equation. Here we can see I have a graph set up already. The independent variable or the weight along the x-axis, the length of the spring or the dependent variable on the y-axis we have one final thing to do here we need to graph the equation and to do that we'll first start off by graphing this ordered pair or the y-intercept when the weight was zero the length of the spring was five centimeters so when the weight was zero we could estimate five would be right about there and when the weight was 8 grams, the length was 20 centimeters. And we do that and simply draw a line in to represent that model. And there's our linear model for the spring problem. This problem does have a second part. This example 3 related to example 2. Use the equation from example 2. The equation we wrote from example 2 was y is equal to 0.15x plus 5. Answer the question, what mass would be needed to stretch the spring a length of 9.5 centimeters? The thing you need to remember here is which variable is representing the length and which variable is representing the, ma the mass. x is the mass, y is the length, so we're going to take the 9.5 and substitute it in for the y. Then we will solve for x. First thing we'll do is subtract 5 from both sides, giving us 4.5 is equal to 0.15x. Then we will divide each side by 0.15. which will give us x is equal to 30, which means we will need a 30 gram weight to stretch the spring 9.5 centimeters. Be sure to check out the third video in the series on using linear equations.